All right, welcome back to grob.tv.com, the Grob Chess Club, where we will be continuing our lecture series on how to move up to Class E. That means rated in between 1000 and 1199, and this is something that I believe that anyone can do. This is our third lesson in the series, and we're going to be talking about strategy and combinations today. And I believe that if you follow this lesson, uh, practice it, and the ones before it, there's no reason you should be, uh, shouldn't be able to get past 500. So, let's begin. All right, the most important piece of strategical advice I can give you as a beginner is that you need to control the center. All right, what do I mean by that, the center? The center of the board consists of four squares. E4, D4, D5, and E5. If you go from any side of the board, those are the middle squares. So if you can't remember the names of them right now, just remember that they are the ones in the middle. And the reason that you need to control these squares is that when you get pieces on them, or pawns on them, you're going to control most of the rest of the board. Um, a queen in the middle controls many more squares than a queen on the side of the board. And we're going to see that with many of the pieces. So by controlling the center, you control the game. So, how do we go about controlling these squares? Well, with the pawns, we're going to start out in the beginning of the game. The pawns want to control the center of the board just as much as the rest of the pieces. So, in the beginning of the game, you want to make a pawn move that controls one of those four squares. So, a common move is E4. Now, this move controls E4 that it's on, and it also indirectly controls D5 because it attacks it. So, by moving that one pawn, you now control half of the center squares. And then a usual black reply will be something like e5. Now black controls two of the squares. He controls e5 and d4. So in the beginning of the game, you want to move pawns to the center so that you control more center squares. And in the beginning of the game, you typically want to move one or two pawns. It's not always, but you usually want to move one or two pawns to the center of the board so that you can have as much control as possible. All right, now we're going to move on to the knights. Knights belong in the middle of the board just as much as the rest of the pieces. So, when you start out a game, you don't want to put a knight on the side of the board. By putting a knight on the side of the board, just count how many squares you can go to. The knight from the side of the board where we're at can go to one, two, three, four squares. Let's just pretend this pawn isn't here. But if you have a knight in the middle of the board, and say we make this move instead, then we see that he controls, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares. So twice as many just by putting him two spaces over. In the middle of the board he controls eight squares and then at least if you put him in a corner the knight only has two squares to go to. So we see that by putting him towards the center we're going to control more squares. And this is a typical opening right now. Um, and it's typical that you usually want to move those knights out right after your pawns. So the order usually goes pawns, then knights. It's not always going to be like that though, I'm just going to warn you. So let's say black follows, and he moves his knight. Now see that white is attacking one of his pawns, so black defends with his knight. Now knight, his knight, also has control of eight squares. So we've gone over knights. Knights belong in the center of the board after the pawns. Now after the knights, you usually want to develop your other knight to the center of the board, so maybe something like this, or you want to develop your bishop on the same side. Um, bishops usually go after knights. Um, the point is that you don't really know where a bishop's going to belong uh, until you've moved the knight. So in this position, a lot of players move their bishop to this spot or up here. Now, it would not be a good idea to to do unnecessary pawn moves, something like this, which a lot of players will do, uh, and there's no real point to it. You're not controlling the center at all with that move. Um, and by not controlling the center, you're going to allow your opponent to get there first, and they're probably going to have better control of the game. So, let's just say white goes and he moves his bishop to the center, and black follows and moves his bishop to the center. Very uh, symmetrical, you might say. So, pawns, knights, bishops, and then uh, as soon as you can, you usually want to try to get your king safe. So, let's say we, uh, we get our king safe, black continues his game, and that brings us to our next piece, the rook. Um, 
the rooks belong in the center of the board. They don't necessarily have to be in the direct middle, but they need to be somewhere where they will control the center of the board. So say white moves his, his rook here. Now he's going to control this right here. And say this pawn were to move, he's going to control the e5 square. Well, let's take that back. So by moving his rook here, he indirectly has control of, of two pieces right now, of, of these two center squares right now. And we see that each move that uh, white and black are making uh, makes some kind of influence on the center. So let's continue. Um, a lot of beginners, um, they're going to play moves like a4, which we know is bad because um, it moves the pawn that's not towards the center. He's not controlling the center at all. Let's say black does make a good center move, and then I see a lot of uh, players will move their rooks out, trying to get them out like this. First of all, this is a horrible move because black can take the rook, and we know that bishops are worth less than rooks, so black's going to give up three points to get five, and that's going to be a really good idea. But even if black doesn't take, the rook doesn't belong like, he doesn't belong there. He's going to have to move again to get to the middle of the board. So usually you want to wait to move the rooks until your king is safe uh, and all your other pieces are developed. So that's just a general rule. Uh, some more things for you to remember. And finally, we're going to talk about the queens. <laughs> I said a lot of players when you start out will begin, uh, begin using the rooks, but even more of them will move their queens out too early. You might see something like this. And in something like this, um, white has moved his queen out too early. He's also moved his bishop before his knight. So those are two things you're generally not supposed to do. Um, and black's been developing everything towards the center and in the order that he's supposed to. So black is doing everything right here. White's doing everything wrong. Um, but we see that white is trying to threaten checkmate in one move with... Uh, if black does nothing, he will take this pawn here. But uh, there's no reason that black shouldn't have some kind of advantage here. Um, and that's because he could just chase it away. So let's see him chase the queen away. And then say the queen runs. And he just develops his knight and the order that we said he was supposed to. And already we see that white's already spent two moves moving his queen. Uh, and his queen still isn't doing anything. Uh, it's attacking my knight, but my knight's not in any kind of trouble. He's defended. Um, so it's not really, sh we're not really sure why uh, white's been moving his, his queen. Uh, and it's just a general rule that you don't want to move your queen out too early because other pieces could threaten it. And then there's certain cases where your queen can get trapped and lost. And there's nothing worse than losing your queen in the first 10 moves of the game. And then you're just out of the game. Uh, let's just show you an example of how your queen can become lost in the beginning of the game. We're not really going to talk about these opening moves too much. Once you start playing, you'll understand uh, these sort of ideas more. And now let's say black moves his queen out for a check. Alright. So, let's say white moves out of the way. Uh, and then, just say black continues. Say black just continues. And now notice that black's still not making moves that are... are contributing to the center. Um, now white continues, and now he is making moves that contribute toward the center. Let's say the queen moves, and now we have some fun. Um, say white takes here. Now you notice that um, the king can't take, because his queen is in a bad place, and now we're checking the king, we're checking the king and we're also hitting the queen at the same time, so we're actually going to win his queen. So that's uh, one reason. And even if black doesn't take it, let's say black runs away. We're going to find that there's still a major advantage for, for white here because we're going to trap his queen. So his queen runs. That's the only space it can go to. So now we play knight c3. And the idea is that if black doesn't do anything, we're going to be able to move our knight here. And we're going to be able to attack his queen and it's completely trapped. So because black moved his queen out too early and he ignored the center of the board, he's gonna lose his queen. So the only move he can do to stop that is right here. But after we move bishop to d, uh, move d4, the bishop has to move away, and now we do trap the queen. He's gonna have to give it up, and white's gonna win the game.